Hey guys, welcome to TC10, the crazy troll nation of YouTube. The crazy just because I am sometimes. The troll because even with face paint on, I consider myself a troll, a cute troll, but a troll nonetheless. Today I just have on foundation and I lightly set my under eyes with translucent powder. I did not put on concealer and I'm not liking how this is looking. So anyway, but we'll get to that later. Right now, though, y'all know what time it is. It is chapstick time. Thank you for being here to help me moisturize my dry ass lips. Oh, this feels so good. If you hear a humming in the background, that's my air fryer. <laughs> so I'm making ribs. So that's what that is. And it should be beeping in about five minutes to let me know it's done. Okay. Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. Full disclosure, last year or the year before, I think it was 2018, I purchased this during a Sephora sale. I had such a horrible time with the Chroma Crystal shades, which is this one, this one, this one, and this one. And so I ended up taking them out of the palette, which left me with similar shades of warm tones. And most of my looks were looking the same. And I ended up throwing it away. So why did I do this again? Why did I buy it again during this Sephora Vogue sale? Vogue. Vogue sale or Rouge. Some people pronounce it. Whatever. I've learned some new techniques over the last couple years. And so I want to put it to the test. Something I used to do back in the day when I did makeup, I used to put my lid colors on first and then my transition shade. Somewhere along the line, I started putting my transition shade first and then the lid colors. I have gotten back into doing the lid colors first when I purchased the Safari sa Safari palette, the Safari palette half off on the Natasha Denona website. These shades, some of them, did not show up and I'm like okay this is what people were talking about but I realized when I put the lid colors on first the colors showed up really nicely and so I'm thinking with the chroma crystal shades put those on the lid first so that they're adhering to the eye primer if you watch almost any video when transition shades are first put on the transition shade will cover like the crease area, the transition area, this up here. And sometimes, depending on the eye shape, the transition shade or the crease shade will also end up on the lid. And so what happens is when you then try to adhere a shimmer or a metallic or a glitter shade, you're putting it on top of another shadow versus putting it on top of the primer. And so, I'm going to put on the primer, put the chroma crystal shades on my lid first, and see if that helps the shadows adhere and helps eliminate some of the fallout. Fallout is not the worst thing ever. However, when it gets into my eyes, they become so irritated. And they may be irritated up to two days after I've washed the shadow off. So that's my issue with fallout. And also, it's a hassle to have to try to clean it up because I tend to do my base face first and so with this palette I said you know what I really love her cream to powder formula I really love her cream to what is it the creamy matte formula and so I wanted to try it again with the new technique and see if I'm able to tolerate the chroma crystal shades because I do think this is a beautiful palette and so that's what I am going to do. And the look I'm going to do today, I'm actually going to use all four of the Chroma Crystals. <laughs> Three are going on my lid. One is going, to, going on as my brow bone highlight. And then I'll just put something else in the crease. And what I did also to make sure that I would use each color at least three times, I went on YouTube, looked at looks, and then I sat and spent maybe like a half hour Ugh, just looking at the palette and seeing, okay, what can I put where? What do I think will look right? And I came up with a lot of looks to, to try. And, and I also did a sheet where I wrote out each shade and how many times the shade would be used throughout using all of these looks. I don't know if I was just having like an OCD moment or what. But each shade 
will be used at least four times some more than that because they might be like the blending shade or the transition shade and so i am really going to be patient with this palette take my time put those chroma crystal shades on and see if i can get it to work for me the only challenge right now is my eye allergies are absolutely horrendous even now like when i wake up my eyes are dry they're itchy they're tearing so it may be difficult for me to determine are my eyes irritated because of the shadow or irritated because of allergies I'm still going to play with this because I don't want to wait too long to try it. I want to just see what happens. And so right now I'm going to put on my Fenty Eyeshadow Primer, of course. And I'm going to blend that out and I'm going to cut that part off. As I said, I have on my base face, I have on my brows. Well, not a full base face because I just have one foundation and I set under my eyes with powder, which I was thinking not to do in case I do have fallout, but then I didn't want the shadow to adhere to my foundation. So those are the two reasons why I went ahead and set my under eye area. And so we'll see what happens. This is the Sephora Stippling Concealer Brush number 52. For lid shades, I will be using Real Techniques Instapop Crease Brushes. And for lower lash line, I will be using the Fenty Precision Brush number 220. And for my transition shade, I will be using the Isom V33. So these are the brushes that you will see me using. The first shade we're going to put on the inner corner is Sun Dazed, and this is a Chroma Crystal. We're going to take our time. And we're going to press... I also find too that when I apply these types of shades, they may adhere well, like this is adhering really well. But when I try to pack it on to intensify the color, because it is not adhering to the primer anymore, I'm putting it on top of shadow, that also I find for me increases my fallout. So that may be something else to consider. We're going to move on to Albade, which is this shade, another Chroma Crystal. Going to take a clean brush. And I am also tapping off the brush before I apply it. So we're pressing. Press and sweep. Once it's down, because I can feel when it's no longer directly on the primer, like here I feel it sticking. Because it's already here, I'm going to press and sweep. And I am seeing some fallout on my face, but not in my eyes. So we're doing good right now. And I really think it's the sweeping that's causing the fallout. Because as I said, once it initially adheres to the primer, you're then just applying a glittery shade on top of that same glittery shade. I'm going to go back to Sundays, that first shade with the Fenty brush, and we're going to put that right here. We're going to wipe that off and take the second shade and put that here. I'm going to take Bronze Age. This is another Chroma Crystal <laughs> with a clean brush, and we're going to, going to put that over here. So we're pressing, tapping, pressing, and I do see glitter on my face and it is not coming off. And maybe because I didn't set my face with powder, so it is actually sticking to my foundation. I'm going to take a clean fencing brush and go into that same shade. And we're going to put that over here. We're going to wipe off this brush. Actually, the one that has the lighter colors on it. And we're going to take Ice Gold, which is this shade here. And use that. Why is this looking funny? Oh, gosh. As a brow bone highlight. We're going to take Sanai, this shade here, which is a cream to powder. And we're going to just go straight in with this Isom brush. And this is going to be our transition shade. So this is going above the line of those lid colors. 
because if I sweep too much on those lid colors, it's going to cause them to flake. So I am very gently and lightly applying this shade. I'm going to take an E Summer V34, dipping into that same shade. And we're going to lightly put that under here. And we're going to take the blending brush that we use for our transition shade. And we're going to blend that. So this is what we have. I'm, I'm wanting to put something else up here. I think I'm going to try Bermuda, which is this shade here, which is also a cream to matte, cream to powder, creamy matte. You guys know what I mean? And I'm going to sweep that up here. And for giggles, we're going to dip straight in and also just sweep that under here. I'm going to take Volcano, this shade here, and this is an Isom T03 brush. And we're going to use this as a liner for our upper lash line. Which also, this can create fallout from those glitter shades, putting another shade on top of it because it may just move the glitter particles and I'm going to take that same shade <laughs> and also run that along down here I'm going to go back with that blending brush with no additional color so that is basically it for this look I'm going to put on some mascara where is my mascara I have open the Urban Decay Vice which is the purple one I'm just going to apply it just because it's the only open mascara that I have right now. This is the cream side. We're dipping back in. The cream side, I was reading the packaging, it's supposed to, ju supposed to just add the color. The special effects side, which is what I'm going to put on now, this is supposed to give it the effect of... I don't know, sparkle or something? I'm not really sure. But to me, it just really looks the same as before I put it on. I'm gonna go back in. I just realized I didn't do my waterline, which may be a good thing because my allergies are so bad. And I really just wanna see if I can work with these chroma crystals without them getting to my eyes. As of right now, I can say I do not feel any fallout in my eyes. I do see it on my face. What I'm going to do now is I am sweating. I see. <laughs> All right. I see fallout even like here in my nose, like here. I see fallout here, like this, this entire area. It's like a patch of fallout right here. I only see a few specks here. I see some on my chin, a few on my chin. But there's like a whole patch of fallout like right here, which is just really bizarre. So I'm going to take a little bit more primer, not primer, foundation, since I did not set my face. And see if I can cover that up. Surprisingly, it's not a lot of fallout under my eyes. It's like down here on my face. What is that about? Somebody let me know. So that did take away what covered up the fallout on my face. I am sweating. You know, I'm going to use a different brush too because maybe you, brushing it away with that same brush might have been adding to it as well. So I'm sweating. So I'm just... Uh, Trying to get some of that off. All right, now I'm going to go in with concealer. Going in with the e.l.f. Putty Blush in Bali. And we're taking a Sephora Foundation Brush number 56, which is the same one that we use for foundation. I have a tendency when I really like a brush to get an extra one. And so we're going to dip in here. And we're going to stipple that on. I'm going to take the one we use for foundation and just go around the edges. I'm going to take translucent setting powder. So we're going to take this fluffy brush. 
Can you see all that powder? And I'm going lightly so that it doesn't really stick stick because I am sweaty already. So we're going to take Honey and Fenty. Then we're going to take the Fenty Nutmeg. And all still using the same brush, which is a Sephora Pro Flawless Light Powder Brush number 50. What else are we going to do? What we always do. <laughs> Mini gloss bomb and hot chocolate. <laughs> What else? Were you expecting something else? <laughs> the finished look. I like it. I like that I still see glitter on my face. It's like a speck. Just a small speck. Oh, that brushed it away. I may have been able to sweep off the fallout if I had powdered my entire face. However, I did not do that because I hadn't put on blush and I had not put on my concealer. I think it worked out well. I do not feel any fallout in my eyes. Adding foundation did cover up. It was a huge patch of fallout. That was just weird. Um, it did cover that up. And... I like the look. So I used the four shades that I removed the last time I had this palette. So I'm glad I am trying it again. So I think for me, I just need to put those colors on the lid first. Take my time applying them. Press them on. Don't sweep them over. <laughs> and then when I apply my transition shade, just to do it very lightly above the lid color line so that those particles don't get disturbed and then fall down on my face. I'm wondering if the fallout here was when I put one of the shades underneath my lower lash line. But it's just weird that it didn't happen on this side. It was only just really right here and I still see a couple specks. But it's not that bad. I'm only seeing like one or two specks here. I see nothing at all. Well, yeah, I see a few up here now that I'm looking more closely. But it's nothing that's bothersome. Like where some videos I watch and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like that's a lot of fallout. But even for me, sometimes I look down here in the mirror and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like that's a lot. And you might not be able to see it, but I can see it. And if I can see it in person in real life, if I was out somewhere, they would be able to see it too. But then some people think glitter on the face is cute. I don't. I'm 51. Glitter on my face is not cute. Anyway, <laughs> if you do have the Sunset Palette, let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think of this look. I will put below what shades are where. And if I do end up having issues with it later falling into my eyes, like through my eyelashes and, and into my eyes, I will put a comment and notate that below. And But right now, and I'm happy with the look. I do like the look. It looks like something similar I did with another palette, but that's okay. And so we've used, how many shades did we use? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven shades out of this 15 pan palette today. And so I'm happy about that as well. So I'm getting through it. And I will do a playlist for the looks I do with this palette as I do for my other palettes. And if you've done looks with this, you know, feel free to post them below and I'll check them out. This video is hella long, so I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. You will see me in the next video.